Barn Door Trap Electronic Circuit next. Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today is part two of the Barn Door Trap series. If you haven't seen part one, go back and see this. Uh, I go through the steps on how to create the platform. In this uh, video, we're going to be covering how to make the electronic circuit. The first step I'll do is get the uh, circuit working on a breadboard. After it's working on a breadboard, then I'll transfer it to an electronic circuit, then in which I will mount it onto the bottom of the barn door trap. Also, uh, if this has turned out better than I really expected, this little finder scope I made, uh, very inexpensive, maybe uh, $2 in total parts for this thing. But what this is used to help me al align on Polaris, uh, put a couple little wires there on the end, and found this little neat uh, plastic mounting bracket uh, right at Home Depot. And, you know, for a couple of bucks, <laughs> that's a pretty decent deal on a finder scope. Quickly before we get started, in case you've never worked with the breadboard, uh, it's important to understand how these uh, lines line up so you can connect your circuit and do the testing. Uh, the way they line up is they kind of line up uh, across, like I got this piece of solder, and it's go and so it goes across like this, and each section is its its own section. So like I've got four little wires right here, and these four little wires, these are on the same, if you notice they're on the same circuit right here on the same line, and when I touch these two with the uh, multimeter, you can see that the uh, continuity is there. Uh, it doesn't cross over to other rows. So when you get ready to build your circuit, you can understand how the connectivity works. LMT317T adjustable regulator. We need a 500 ohm multi-turn potentiometer and we got a, uh, a knob for that as well. Uh, we need a 150 ohm half watt resistor, 2.1 microfarad ceramic disc capacitors, a SPST mini toggle switch, a 9 volt battery clip, and a plastic project box. Uh, I've noticed that the I want to try to make this as compact as possible so when I build the circuit I'm hoping I can put this 9 volt battery inside here as well. I'll put a link in on the description below so you can uh, download this and look at it but I'm just going to follow this simple uh, motor control circuit uh, here. Pitfalls that I ran into here. Uh, I first soldered the middle and the right one uh, and when I did that then it when you turn the knob it was opposite. I like to have it where if I turn the knob to the right I increase the voltage and I want to turn it to the left I want to decrease it. So in order to do that you have to solder this terminal in the middle and then the other one on the left. This is the LM317T right here and I took a jumper and I jumped uh, from pin 2 over to uh, another row so I could access that row a little bit easier. Uh, the way I have it is going from left to right pin 1, pin 2, pin 3 and let's go ahead and start putting the pieces together here. Well, uh, potentiometer resistor and we'll plug it into pin 1. We'll take one of these uh, ends here hundred and fifty ohm half watt resistor and that's also going to have one end that's going to go on to pin 1 One uh, also goes over to pin two, and that's why I put that little jumper over here so we could get to it a little bit easier to put it in here. So the other end of this uh, resistor goes right into that same row right there. What we need to do on the same row with this is put a capacitor in here, one of the uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitors so we'll take that we 
need the positive side of the motor now what I did with with this is I don't have this hooked up to the motor I have it hooked up to a uh, a voltmeter uh, it's probably a good idea when you're building your circuit to not have it hooked up to your motor it's only a 3 volt motor and you're using a 9 volt battery which could very easily burn up the motor so you, as you're building the circuit uh, take it to a multimeter so you don't uh, burn up your motor so you need to take this motor and connect it to pin 2 on here The next thing we can do with this uh, uh, capacitor here is we can put that uh, capacitor off of pin two. It's just these are all going to kind of go together on the other side, so we'll just put this into uh, one of the slots on the other side. Let's do that right there. We'll work on uh, pin three. Pin three has also a uh, a capacitor in there as well so pin 3 is let's see if we can move this out of the way so you can see it uh, pin 3 is is right there right down this row so we'll let's just see if we can get this out of the way so it doesn't uh, short out okay yeah so that's on pin 3 and that's going to go down on the other side to uh, where everything collects on the other side which is right here we'll go ahead and put that one in right there um, the positive side of the battery here's the battery connection we'll take this and we'll place that right down on pin 3 there's that and the negative side just goes down over here to the other side all these other sides are just coming together as one a variable resistor that goes down into that as well need the um, negative side of the motor and that's going to go into here like that now let's make sure I don't have any of the uh, wires touching each other or shorting out it looks pretty good there okay so there's a big overview of uh, what it looks like put together there's the uh, multimeter and let's see what happens when I connect some power to it again if you if you make a mistake here uh, it's better to figure it out now instead of getting it onto your motor and burning up your motor okay so it's reading right now 3.62 volts which is uh, good nothing smoking uh, this variable resistor right here it'll drop down to about one volt and then as you crank it up it will uh, go up to about five and a half volts so that is the circuit in the rough draft form uh, like I say the the motor itself is ready for three volts uh, probably would be a good idea to understand where your motor is at and you don't want to try to you know fry it but uh, there's a, an example of the circuit working here. Oh, the one thing I didn't bring into the circuit uh, during this test is to bring in the uh, on-off switch. And all I'll have to do is just uh, solder that in between the, the, the positive lead here. Here's the printed circuit that uh, comes on that website that uh, you'll have to follow. Uh, it took me several tries to actually uh, get this to work correctly on, on my breadboard. So uh, make sure you take your time when you get to this and go through the steps to make it work. Now me, myself, uh, so I could show you guys in the video, I'm not really uh, too uh, adept at reading the circuits but I made something that's a little bit more easy for me to understand and one of the things that you'll need to do is you'll need to understand that the, uh, the LMT317T 
there's a different pinouts uh, for these. So I just marked them as one, two, and three so that uh, I could understand where they needed to go. And then I just started uh, uh, drawing out where the connections were made. Here's my motor. Now, one thing I want to show you here is that uh, I was getting ready to have to unsolder this lead. But if you notice this plate for the uh, the motor, or for the battery on the motor, it's got these little elongated holes. So all you have to do to remove this battery tray is just twist it. So remember that when you get ready to do it. And then after you twist it, just solder on a couple of leads. Well, again, I'm no solder master expert, but I'm going to go through this the best I can. Uh, what the plan is, is I'm going to try to make the circuit as tiny as possible over here on this one side and leave this other area open where I'll probably end up cutting the circuit board off so I could then put uh, the 9-volt battery in this location. Now, what I've done, uh, since you probably saw that little circuit that I kind of just drew out so I could read it myself pretty well. Uh, I first lined up all the, the, the pins that will be on pin one over here and I just pulled it uh, through the board on the other side and this first solder I'm going to do is going to be soldering pin one then to the, the variable resistor and the uh, 150 ohm half watt resistor right here in front of it. So here's pin 2 uh, soldered out. Pin 2 has the uh, resistor 2 that's going from pin 1 to pin 2. It also has the, uh, the red positive motor here. I don't have the motor hooked up. Remember, I'm just going to test this, make sure it's going to work before I'll uh, put the motor on there. And then it also it has capacitor 2. Uh, on here. So on the back side when I soldered these all together uh, I came up with this blob of solder right here. So there's all of those. Uh, you can see the uh, capacitor 2 wire coming out over here where we'll connect uh, uh, more leads to that. Next we'll work on is what I call a pin 3 right there. 3 has the uh, positive battery plugged into it. It also has capacitor 1 plugged into it. So I've got those turned around on the back side here. Uh, there's a pin 3 right there. I just got it kind of wrapped around. Uh, what I'll do next is apply a little bit of solder to that. Okay, for this last solder connection, uh, we have four or excuse me, five points that we're going to wire in. We're going to wire in uh, Resistor 1, which is the uh, uh, adjustable uh, rheostat uh, resistor, goes in there. And then uh, also the other sides of um, both capacitor 1, capacitor 2. And then we have uh, the motor negative and we have the battery negative that go in inside there. And uh, there's a total of uh, five points that are all coming together on this last connection and I've just kind of like put them all together right on the back there and I'm just going to now throw a bit of solder on it make sure I don't have any stray uh, pieces of solder that are like uh, going between these connections you know I'll, I should have uh, four clean separations between all these solder pads here uh, I think I have it pretty well uh, covered now and I'm going to hook it up next and see what kind of results we get. Two motor leads right here, the positive and the negative. I've got these hooked up to the uh, uh, multimeter so I can read the voltage. Uh, hopefully when we put this together we won't see any smoking. Uh, we'll go ahead and plug this in. Oh, so far it's not smoking so that's a good sign. Uh, let's go ahead and adjust the rheostat. It's 2.1 Okay, 5.5 at max, uh, still no smoking, that's a good sign, and we'll take it on back down to all the way to the left, and it's 1.27 volts. So, to me, that's a, that's a successful solder, may not be too beautiful, but at least it's successful on the circuit.
this project box that I have right here, I'll put a link in the description below so you, if you're interested in using this particular box. Uh, but looks like what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, cut the board so I can then fit in the 9 volt battery in there. Uh, it's, I have these two screws that I can use right here. I soldered the power switch in between the uh, 9 volt uh, po positive wire and what I've done is I've decided to put both the, uh, the, the adjustable resistor and the power switch on the same side cut out the circuit board a little bit to allow the uh, adjustable resistor uh, to uh, go fit down in their flush. Getting it all positioned inside the uh, uh, enclosure here uh, gonna go ahead and give it a try uh, we'll try hooking this up. I've got the uh, multimeter again hooked up. I don't have the motor. Uh, don't want to fry the motor if I screwed something up. So let's go ahead and apply the power. Okay, so there's the power now onto the uh, unit. Uh, the power switch is right here. Let's see here. This is all the way down. Let's go ahead and click it on. Okay, now it's on. It's got uh, 1.27 volt and we'll crank it up a little bit and it looks like it's holding up 5.5 the uh, motor leads is I just drilled a hole right down there at the bottom and have it just coming out right at the bottom of the platform here uh, the plan is is that this is going to sit underneath the uh, uh, the platform and I have to be able to access these screws in order to, to replace the battery so what this will be is this will probably be the uh, you know the the bottom plate and the, the top plate right here will have a couple of screws where it will hold on to the top there the little gear here it has a really tiny allen wrench it probably don't have it in your most common allen wrench set I I picked up this one here it's a actual size on it is the uh, the the point oh three five and uh, if you have that great but if you don't you might have to pick that up in order to tighten this little gear down I'm gonna uh, mount the motor and then try to determine where the best location for the uh, electronic circuit board is going to go electronic circuit board uh, in, in the, uh, the case here uh, trying to figure out where a good location for it to be I mean I have it on the tripod right now so I have to give it enough clearance uh, for the tripod and I also have to give it clearance uh, for the motor where the motor is in place here I took a couple of screws that I had for left over from the uh, hinges and just uh, attached it to the bottom there made sure I had a, plenty of clearance for my tripod and I have clearance for my motor as well also put some electrical tape over the top of these uh, exposed buttons here I didn't want uh, anything to ground out on it uh, just took a little bit of shrink wrap wrapped it down underneath there to the motor put in these little arrows here to uh, track the revolution uh, need one revolution per minute uh, I also in order to uh, get this synced and everything as I loaded it up with the camera and the camera weight that I would be using I also kinda like tilted it in approximate uh, with Polaris in my location bolt here I did put a, uh, a cap nut on the end here what I was finding is is that as this moves up it get, becomes top heavy and there wouldn't be any more <laughs> larger of a disaster if your camera went ahead and flipped over and smacked the side of your tripod and fell over so uh, I would recommend putting that uh, cap nut there to keep it from falling. Okay, pretty darn close. One minute. That's what I want. I dialed in the uh, minute. What I did is I put a little arrow on the uh, adjustable resistor right here and now I can have a idea where one minute will be uh, chances are what will happen is is that uh, as the battery wears out or whatever the revolutions uh, will not uh, quite match up and I'll have to adjust it 
but at least this is a good starting point uh, to get me going. Uh, next video what we'll do is we'll do some uh, coverage on how this performs. Uh, I'm really excited. I hope it does well. Uh, stay tuned. If this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.